Hey everyone, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this video tutorial. We're going to dive into Globy Float today. So for those of you who have Podio and are using Podio for real estate or for anything else, hopefully you're using Globy Flow. If you're not, I highly recommend it. I think that the power of Podio is augmented by five, 10 times once we start using the workflow management that's available in Globy Flow. So um, I definitely recommend you use it if you haven't started using it yet um that's okay it's not that hard to learn but i would recommend just at least popping it open and trying today i'm going to be demonstrating how we can make use of manual flows okay so a big thing that i learned quickly when i started making flows in globy flow is that we want to reduce our effort of rework all right so i'm going to show you how manual flows can help us to do that and to demonstrate, we're going to be using the project management app package. We're going to be using the deliverables app. What I want to do is I want to take a deliverable and I want to uh, pretend we're going to initiate a flow. We'll build it together. I want to say that I have a deliverable here and potentially I would like to trigger some kind of workflow when I change the status of this deliverable from original scope to change order. Or in fact, whenever um, an item is a change order. So when it's updated and created, we'll get into that in a second. So right now, if I do this, nothing happens, right? The system doesn't really do anything. And that's okay, we're gonna build a flow in Globy Flow, all right? So let's do that, let's build that flow. Now, um, if you haven't seen Globy Flow before, this is probably a little bit foreign, but um, basically here is my workspace and here are my apps and in the deliverables app, I'm going to create a flow. Now you'll notice that I number my apps and the reason I do that is because I like to have some kind of sequential order to my apps to help me understand where they, uh, where they go and what leads to what. All right, so I'm going to create, this is, in my opinion, the wrong way to do it. I'm gonna create an item updated flow, <clears throat> all right? Now, I'm not gonna number this one yet. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a flow, we're on the filters here, whenever the type has changed and that type field equals, oops, sorry, oops, and a field value match, that type field equals, change order, all right? So when this happens, I'm going to do the following thing. So what could we do with this? We could assign a task, we can do an app mention, we can do all that kind of stuff. So let's let's go and do that. Let's uh, maybe like uh, search, let's search maybe our team roles app and um, where the role equals, let's see, what kind of roles do we have in here? You can do this with me here. So we got, uh, an admin, all right? So let's assign a, uh, something to the admin. So assign task to that person that we just found. And the task is set up, change order form, send for signature. All right, due date, current date plus one, and maybe a link to whatever, but okay, that's fine. <clears throat> all right, so I'm gonna assign that task. All right, maybe I'm going to do a, um, get referenced items, let's go to the project using my forward relationship and do a comment on my deliverable and let's do an at mention to the project manager, all right? So I'll do an at mention to him, hey, note, this is a new change order, okay? All right, I can do that. Uh, I have assigned a task, I've done an at mention, and maybe I'm gonna do one more thing. I don't know, let's update the item. Let's make it silent, and let's just, for the sake of doing something, let's make the status in progress, whatever, all right? So I'm gonna do all those things, save it. All right, so now that that's a fine flow. It'll work nicely if I were to take any deliverable it should operate, meaning that it'll do all that stuff. So let's take this framing one, it's original scope now. If I move it to change order, it should do all that stuff that we just talked about, right? All right, so it adds a task to set up the change order form, it gives an app mention to the project manager, and it goes status work in progress. All right, sweet, looks good. Here's the problem. If I create a new deliverable, that is a change order, all right, and I click save deliverable. Will my flow operate? The answer is no, it won't. Why won't it operate? Because 
the creation trigger is different than the update trigger. So notice that this flow here will only operate when, I, when an item is updated and type has changed to change order. So when an item is created, that's a different trigger. So for a lot of these kinds of things where you need to have the same flow in place on item create and item update, you're going to have to duplicate the flow. Now what most people would probably do, and what I used to do back in the day, is I would go to my new item flow, I'd edit that, and I'd go through all the same steps, right? I'd go through and I'd do the search step, okay, for team roles where role equals admin, and I'm gonna assign a task. Now here's the problem here, I'm, this is gonna work fine, but now I have to make sure my task title is the exact same, right? What if we change this to a different role? Like I'm updating this in two different places and it's not going to be efficient, especially for gigantic flows, right? If I'm gonna do that, you know, get reference items. Now I already have projects in this, so I don't have to do that, but I can, if I wanna do that comment, you know, I got to do the at mention, the project manager. I got to make sure my text is e exactly the same. And then what happens if we decide we're going to change that message? We have to go into two flows instead of one, and we're going to lose track. If you have a complex system, you're going to lose track. All right. So that's the problem with it. My recommendation is the manual flow. So let me show you what that is. All right. Now, I would have also had to do an if statement to say if the type was change order. I'm going to show you that in a second. All right, so now here's how I would set it up. This item update change order is fine, but I'm going to change this. I'm going to get rid of these filters, all right? And I'm going to make this a manual flow. All right, so it's a manual flow. I'm going to get rid of these filters. I'm going to call it change order. All right, now what is a manual flow? Manual flow does not operate unless triggered by another flow. So this won't do anything. If I were to be in any of these and move back and forth, this is not gonna operate because there is no trigger triggering it. I took that trigger out. So let's build that trigger back in. Simply an item update flow Okay, where type has changed and type equals change order. Now, instead of building that whole thing again, I'm going to do a trigger flow action and I'm going to trigger the change order flow. Super simple. That's it. Save it. All right. Now, what will happen if I move it to change order? Hopefully that same set of steps that I had originally set out. And there it is. All right. Cool. It's working. It still won't work on create, but I can fix that, can I? All right, so let's fix that. We have that flow ready to go. Let's go to our new item. And now we're saying on create, it's gonna do all this other stuff. It's also going to set an if statement that if type equals change order, I always put my end ifs there, trigger a flow, change order. So that change order flow is where we'll go to update everything. The triggers aren't ever going to change. All right. So we save that. Now when I create a new deliverable, somewhere, right? It's a change order. So now on the creation, it's going to go through the steps. It's going to ask the question, is this a change order? And if so, it will start filling in that detail. So you see on the activity, it starts filling that out, that um, the change order, you know, send it for signature, note this new change order, does the same stuff, and this was on creation. All right, so we've accomplished it. And now anytime I need to adjust how that flow works, let's say I need to change the verbiage, I just edit the manual flow. I go in here and I say, uh, maybe, you know, oops, I add a, a uh, hyperlink for them to uh, get maybe instructions or something, or maybe um, I'm adding instructions to this. Whatever the case might be, I edit it once and I don't have to adjust it in more than one place. All right. So this is a Podio, this is a Globiflow best practice. You need to get used to manual flows. You need to use them often, almost as much as possible. You see, I use them a ton 
Um, they're really great to have a one-stop shop. They're also a good way to break up really complex flows into steps, right? So you can have one flow, say, to send the email and one flow to send the text, maybe the same trigger, but you can have those flows separated differently so that uh, you can adjust them. And you'll notice in my renter's workspace here, uh, I have tons of these manual flows because I want to be able to edit them easily. I have the send SMS is different than the send email, even though they might be triggered by the same thing. All right, so definitely check that out. Let me know if you have any questions about that. I'm happy to answer any specifics about Globy Flow. And just start using it, start getting used to it, and um, it'll help to automate your business for sure. In the meantime, check out everything we have available at IncomeDigs.com. I hope to talk to everybody really soon.